Hello friends, welcome to another Breach Breakdown. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the ChatGTP data breach. What exactly happened? Why two weeks ago I wrote an article to say that this was completely inevitable and what we can do about it. But before we get into that, it really means a lot to us if you like this type of content to subscribe to our channel and like this video. It helps us keep in favor with the Google algorithm gods and we'd really appreciate it. But enough about that, let's get on to the content. So this breach actually started all the way back in March, where some users were posting on Reddit and other forums that they could see the chat history of other users. Well, it turns out that threat actors were actually behind this. They exploited a vulnerability in the Redis open source library that ChatGDP used. This vulnerability allowed them to see the chat history of other active users. It also allowed them to see the username, email, and some partial credit card information uh, of some users as well. So you may be thinking, okay, what's the big deal? Some chat history of cheat chat TDP. How does that pose a big security risk? And this is really where my arguments of the article that I wrote can really come in. There is huge amounts of sensitive information being piped into chat GDP from employees of organizations. And it's happening across all fields. Software developers are using it to help them with their code. So there's proprietary code being put in there. Perhaps there's credentials and secrets as it's asking it to write code to connect to different services. Your data is being input in there to try and break it down and analyze it. But this could be very sensitive. Even your legal teams are probably using it to analyze the uh, legal contracts that are coming through so that you can see how so much sensitive information is ended up being stored in chat GDP. But here's the kicker. Chat GDP says specifically, do not do this. Why? Because it doesn't have sufficient security to be able to protect this data. And do you know what? That's kind of fair enough on chat GDP to say, hey, this is not what our product's made for. But that's not going to stop employees from using it in this way. Chat GDP doesn't have fine grade access logs. It doesn't have encryption of the data, as we can see by the vulnerabilities. It doesn't have access control and there's no way of governing what's going into chat GDP. There's no overarching different roles where you can see it from a director's point of view. So surely the solution then is just to ban chat GDP. And many organizations are. Samsung is one of the latest ones that has rolled out a complete ban on all of its employees of using chat GDP. A data security service, Cyberhaven, has said that it's blocked requests to input data into ChatGDP of 4.2% of the 1.6 million workers at its clients' companies. But here's why I think that that is never going to work. There is a palpable fear in the industry, and I feel it, and so do probably you, that if you're not using large language models like ChatGDP to increase your productivity, then you're going to fall behind the threshold. Blocking chat DDP now feels like you're blocking someone's productivity. So they're going to find ways around that. Now, all of these factors combined actually make chat GDP one of the most juiciest high value targets for attackers. They can potentially gain access to lots of high value sensitive data that isn't sufficiently protected by chat GDP. Attackers are always going to take the path of least resistance. And there's lots of ways that you can try and hack into chat TDP. You can find vulnerabilities in the entire system, which is what we're talking about in this data breach. And that's definitely going to continue to happen. Chat GDP is part of your supply chain, whether you want it to be or not. And therefore, an attack on chat GDP is potentially a massive supply chain attack on all many, many organizations. The other area is targeting individual accounts. For instance, conducting phishing campaigns to get into the history of chat GDP, because again, the user accounts don't consider this to be sensitive. So chat GDP accounts are not sufficiently protected, but also through individual access tokens. One interesting metric that really shows the massive increase in how chat GDP is being used at work is the massive increase of open AI access credentials that are being leaked in public spaces. One of the things that GitGuardian is famous for is monitoring public spaces like github.com to try and find leaked credentials. The biggest spike that we ever saw for a single type of credential was open AI credentials at the end of 2022. And this spike has continued to grow. 
Now, these are open AI credentials that are being used inside source code, so programmatically, but have been leaked in a public repository. These access tokens potentially could give me the chat history of that user as well. So this is just another avenue that attackers can use chat GDP. Now, there is another risk that I talked about in my article about using chat GDP, and it's one that I've used for lots of different AI products. And that is that AI isn't really that good. It's incredible, but in terms of being a good software engineer, uh, well, it's not that great. ChatGDP and other AI systems are trained on the common crawl data set. This is publicly available information. What is one of the biggest sources of this data set? It's actually public repositories and GitHub because this is one of the biggest providers of source code in the world. And that's what AI wants, lots of data. But here's a little thought experiment. Go to a random open GitHub repository and look at the quality of the code. Is it good or is it bad? The majority is gonna be bad. And that's what ChatGDP is being trained on. So when you ask it to do simple tasks, it's gonna do it in a way that's probably not that secure. So we can't ban chat GDP, we can't stop our employees from using it, we can't really stop employees from putting sensitive information in there, chat GDP doesn't sufficiently store it, and it's kind of a shitty engineer. So are we all doomed? Well, honestly, this is the part of the video where I would probably be able to plug something or provide some kind of solution, and honestly, I'm sorry, I just don't. There are some things that we should do and some things that we should consider, for sure. But in terms of an all-around solution, well, there's just not one available yet. The firstly, I think banning ChatGDP is the wrong move. It's going to make using it more secretive, which means that you're going to have less visibility over what your employees are doing. I don't think you're going to stop them from using ChatGDP. So it's time to lean into it. Educate employees about what kind of information can be put into there, how it can be used. And that way, at least you'll get some visibility and oversight into areas that it's being used for. How your employees use ChatGDP could actually be some good indicators of some areas of tools that perhaps you're missing. Are they using it to analyze data? Perhaps you need to invest in creating some purpose-built data analytics tools that actually store it sufficiently and enable them to do the same job, but in a secure way. ChatGDP can provide some insights into that. When it comes to plugging in sensitive information into ChatGDP, like secrets and credentials, well, this when good secrets detection and secrets management comes into play. What we've always been talking about. How do we prevent our secrets from being leaked? We wrap them in our vaults, in our secrets managers. We monitor where they are. If your employees don't have access to secrets, then it's less likely that they're going to sprawl. Well, that's enough doom and gloom for today. Let me know what you thought about this video. And if you have ideas, I'd like to have a discussion about this. And remember to like and subscribe to this video if you like this type of concept.